Hey everyone, this is Chris, and you're listening to One Cross Radio, and we're back for another episode that's, uh, this one's not about Star Wars, the next one might be, or it might be about a disaster, I'll be honest, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> I, I, so one thing I'm learning, uh, with the ADHD, and it explains a lot, but it's something I've become almost hyper aware on, is I'll get very, very fixated on certain things for a while. And it's almost like I got to record them while I'm in that zone. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult not to. Um, and that time with the disaster one, I, I didn't get the chance to record. So I might try to record uh, some Star Wars stuff soon, whether or not it'll be the next episode or two I drop. Remains to be seen. It might just be, hey, record a bunch and sprinkle them around throughout the year. Um, but that's not right now. Uh, right now we are talking about something very different. Uh, we are talking about the anniversary special, uh, arguably the best anniversary special, uh, for Power Rangers. And we are looking at Mighty Morphin Power Rangers once and always. Um, it was the anniversary special that just dropped on Netflix uh, just uh, just last month in April. I can't believe we're already be already in May. Uh, by the time you hear this, we'll be uh, about two weeks into May. Let's see. Yep, two weeks because Monday was the first. Uh, so we'll be halfway through May um, right now. So happy belated. Uh, May the fourth be with you and Revenge of the fifth. Um, and anybody whose moms listen to this afterwards, happy Mother's Day from One Cross Radio. Um, so yeah, once and always dropped, uh, late April and it was, you know what, I'll, I'll say this. It wasn't perfect, but it was, it was fantastic, uh, for what it was. Like, I don't think you should go into this, uh, too critically. Now, let me let me unpack that a little bit. The reason I'm saying that is now people will use that as an excuse all the time to be like, oh, it was for the fans. It, it, we didn't make it for critics. But if you go in expecting it to be like masterpiece theater, um, like the highest brow RPM in space Power Rangers, this isn't it. Mighty Mor and it, it, Mighty Morphin was never that, so that's why I'm saying like if you if you tamper the expectations, if you don't go in looking at it like that, because Power Rangers at points did get too higher, uh, too higher brow for lack of another term. Um, if you know what Mighty Morphin was, then you'll know what to expect with this. That being said, it did also mature. Uh, it is very much Mighty Morphin for people my age that can still be enjoyed with their kids. Uh, people die on screen in this. Trini, who, who's, uh, whose actress Tweed Trang uh, passed away in a car accident, uh, I believe in early 2000. Um, so she, she wasn't here, but her character, uh, as was shown in the trailer and then in the episode, She's killed and they don't even uh, she's killed by Robo Rita and they don't even use the uh, the standard Power Rangers stuff of destroyed or anything like that. Like, no, uh, Trini's daughter is like she killed mom. She murdered mom. Uh, people die on screen. Uh, the violence is upped a little bit, but not ridiculously. Um, so people get stabbed through the chest by stuff. Uh like people pin down a putty and then Zach chops them almost in half. Like it's matured up a bit. And that was really, really cool to see. It was really cool to see the, the zoo ranger, the, the original uh, mighty Morphin suits in a modern aesthetic uh, with more modern special effects. Um, it was a real nice treat. Um, not only that, they they delivered on a real, really solid story, and I think they handled things very, very well. Um, and it could have been easy to to not. Um, yeah, I, I'm just very complimentary of it. Um, getting Steve Cardenas back was nice because 
Steve Steve rarely got to show back up after he left the show. Um and Rocky, I, I always did feel bad for just because he was always in the shadow of Jason until Zeo. And then at that point as well, like when Rocky was coming in, Tommy, uh, the late great Jason David Frank, was firmly established as the new leader as the White Ranger. So Steve Cardenas was always looked at as like the a second class Red Ranger almost um, just because it's like you're. You're not standing out like you're the original Red Ranger did, who was the leader of the group, but then also you're not even playing second in command to Tommy. Um, so he didn't really get to start to stand out until Zeo. Uh, so it's always great to see him get uh, get back in, get a fair shake. Um, he's always fun to watch perform. Uh, it was awesome to see david yost back as billy um he has been away from the franchise since he left um due to numerous behind the scenes issues of, of bullying from production staff and crew uh as it was coming out at that time that uh david yost was a is gay he's he's a homosexual male um the 90s were a less less good time um so it was awesome to, it, it's been awesome to see him slowly come back uh and embrace the ranger stuff but then also actually see him on the screen again as billy and he was he was like the leader of this um it was great to see that and he he did a, a great performance as well um Everybody, everybody who got to come back. Sorry, I'm just blanking a little bit. I was about to say uh, Catherine Hillard, but that's the character. Um, oh, yeah. Catherine Sutherland uh, back to play Catherine was great. And then they did cement uh, some stuff from some from some of the comics and stuff that was hinted at early on that. No, uh, Tommy and Catherine did end up together. They did get married and they had a son named JJ. That's something that was solidified in the Boom Studio comics. So it was nice to see that get a nod here. Um, and then I don't have the actress's name in front of me, but the actress who played um, Trini's daughter, she was really good. She brought a lot of zest to the role, but also it's like she's clearly a teenager with attitude but a modern one. So it's not like eye rolling, like, oh, we're doing 90s ideals, idealized teenagers in 2023. Um, to me, hands down, though, the star of the show was Walter Emanuel Jones. Uh, and I mean this in no disrespectful way to any of the other cast members. But this is the 30th anniversary for the show. Most of the cast were in their early 20s um, when they when they were playing Rangers uh, in in the early 90s. Um, and so they all they all looked like they were in their early 40s. And I'm not saying that disparagingly like they they look they they all look great, but they they look their age. Walter's the exception. Walter looks like he's maybe aged 10 years like that guy. I'm pretty sure that guy lives in the fountain of youth. Um, and it was awesome seeing him be Zach again because he hasn't been on Rangers outside of doing random voiceover um, in Forever Red. He hasn't been on since he he left the show. Um and that was another really cool thing as a long time. If you're a long time Rangers fan, or especially if you were a fan of Mighty Morphin in general, once and always is a, an absolute love letter to Mighty Morphin. Um, it is the it is a Mighty Morphin anniversary. And yes, it's it's filled with other references to other Ranger teams. Um, I think. Johnny Young Bosch and Karen Karen Astley. Uh, that's not her last name. I'm messing it up. Um, but Adam and Aisha, they're I, th I think they're part of SPD uh, now in this episode. So they were only there for cameos, which I would have loved to see them more. Um, but it is what it is. Um, it was great to see them as well. There was references to SPD. Uh, you saw other Rangers. 
uh, as toys, kind of, because Robo Rita is trying to steal Rangers to go back in time so then she can take over her younger body when she was still human. Um, because Rangers. Uh, and then kill the Rangers while they're kids. And yeah, I, I'm pretty sure she even said kill them. Um, so there's a lot of references. They also reference the Z-Wave. Zordon is nowhere to be seen in the episode, which is cool. I'm actually really glad they didn't. Um, the Temptation would have been there, but then also the first four series, or uh, yeah, series of Power Rangers, because Mighty Morphin had three seasons, um, and then Zeo had one, Turbo had one, and Space had one. Um, but those first four series slash uh three sorry four teams for lack of another term like they all built up towards the end of in space because at that point power rangers was ending and like at the end zordon sacrifices himself as as, as he's killed his like the Z wave happens and his good energy spreads across the universe. Um, and then either evil is destroyed or the people who were evil, but had some good in them were almost like purified and became good. Um, so that's what happened with at the end. And Zordon's been dead since. And I was nervous with coming back with mighty Morphin and all that. They're like, Oh man, are they going to bring him back? Like it'd be cool to see, but also it undoes such a, such a big thing within the, echelon for lack of another term within the canon uh and thankfully they they didn't and they referenced the z-wave they had a decent explanation as to what happened almost like in rita's case because there was good in her it pushed the evil out and then the evil of rita went into this robot form and that's how you got robo rita um and I'm like, you know what? I'm I'm here for it. I've seen wackier stuff in Power Rangers, so why not? Um, if I can if I can go with so many other things in Power Rangers, I can I can I can rock with that. Um, and they got the actress who voiced Rita back, and she did phenomenal as always. Um, they got Alpha Five back, although he's not Alpha Five now; he's Alpha Nine. Um, but he's very much like a modern Alpha Five, and that was awesome as well. Same performer, just bring his all to it. Um, they brought back the Rad Bug. It was the Rad Bug 2.0, and if you don't remember, the Rad Bug was the flying friggin' car that Billy made. Um, <laughs> that was great. Uh, they did reference Billy, uh, when David Yost left in Zio, uh, the thing they wrote into the story was he was suddenly rapidly aging and he had to go to Aquatar, the water world where the alien rangers were from. Uh, and he he met somebody and he was staying there because he fell in love. Uh, they even referenced that a bit where it's like, hey, we can do you want us to pick you up and take you back to Aquatar? So and so would love to see you. And, he, and that was a nice reference. And it was it was packed full of Easter eggs. And it was it was it was a joy. It was a delight to watch. And that was that was really, really nice. At times, so many of these anniversary specials, not necessarily with Although, yeah, points with Power Rangers um, as well. It's like, hey, we got to hype it up. We got to put all this huge emphasis and importance and weightiness and all that on there. And that's not to say that this was inconsequential because, no, they spelled out the consequences within the within the show. Like, they spelled it out well enough. But while they did that, it it did not lose what made Mighty Morphin Mighty Morphin. And Mighty Morphin is something that's so much fun to go back to. It's light. It's fluffy. And I mean that in the best possible way. And it's not like it doesn't go to heavier territory. Maybe not as heavy as In Space or RPM or friggin' Time Force. Um, but it still did touch on some heavier things. But when you watch Mighty Morphin, Mighty Morphin is comfort, man. It is... It, I've said this as a joke, but there's some truth to it. It's hard to be stressed out it, it, or very... It, it, it alleviates the depression or the anxiety a bit uh, when I watch it because it's hard to be 
it's hard to be anxious when I'm watching people doing unnecessary backflips and their arms make whooshing noises. There's a levity to it. And that levity came through in spades and it didn't sacrifice to the story. Uh, it didn't undercut the, the tension they were creating with the story. You felt the pain that Trini's daughter was feeling and you understood where she was coming from and her aggression. But then you understood why she would actually sacrifice herself for Billy, much like Trini did in in the show uh in this special uh you understood where the characters were coming from it the stuff didn't feel like it was just forced in like oh we gotta make it epic and awesome and it's the antithesis of the worst specials from power rangers looking at you once a ranger looking at you legendary battle um this, I'd say, is if it's not my number one, it's my number two um, Power Rangers special. Forever Red might be always be my favorite, but this is this is pretty dang close. Um, if not number one, like they're borderline interchangeable. Um, it w When I saw the runtime as well, because I was like, this is like almost an hour. I was wondering how that was going to feel, because at times uh, a little uh, like at times a little Mighty Morphin can go a long way, just like a little uh, Sentai can go a long way. Uh, but it breezes by, but it doesn't feel like anything's being skipped. And then at the end, I was like, you know what? I wanted more. Not like anything was left. Not like I felt like, oh, you 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 skip stuff. There's there's something on the cutting room floor that should should be there. It was that was awesome. I'd like more, please. And I can't always say that's been the case with anniversary stuff, um, reunion shows, um, that like which are a trend going on right now. I would like more, please. Give us more of the, <laughs> give us more of once and always. Uh be it with the original cast, be it something else. Power Rangers is in an interesting position uh, just because some things are moving within Hasbro. Um, some things are evidently moving between Toei, Toei and Hasbro. And Toei is the Japanese studio that does Super Sentai, which Power Rangers lifts a chunk of its footage from along with the Zords and the suits. Um, so we're in an interesting place. And it's not known what's going to happen. It's not really known what's going to happen after Cosmic Fury. So there could be a blank slate. And with that, there are some interesting possibilities. And before Once and Always, I might have been like, no, always adapt the Sentai. Always, uh, like, always pull from the Sentai. It's been ingrained in Power Rangers from day friggin' one. Now, not that I'm opposed to it. I'd love for that to continue. But. If you can do something more consistently with the love and care and the professionalism that they did once and always with, I'm more open to non-Sentai informed Power Rangers now than I was before that. Now there's of course the caveats there, but I'd be I'd be down for that if they can deliver it like that. I'd be down for beyond an anniversary special maybe a mini season or something else involving past rangers um a couple of the cast and uh my boy nathan will appreciate that i said a couple of the cast because some web web uh websites were like the cast of in space wants this where it's like you're exciting two people bruh that's two out of five six uh six or seven um where they're like hey once and always was great let's do one for in space i'm open to it i i would be uh if you could get the love and care involved with those i'd be down for it if you could get the love and care uh i'd be down for almost any other season getting back heck this might be the way to make operation overdrive <laughs> and that team more palatable um so do yourself a favor. Watch this. Watch this special. I'd I'd really recommend it. If you're a Ranger fan, I think you, you it it's required watching almost. But if you're not, if you I'd say even if if you just need something to watch, just toss this on. It explains enough as it goes that you're not going to feel 
you're missing out on anything. It's something else I need to compliment it for. Uh, sometimes other one, uh, other things as they reference everything too much, uh, it can be like, oh, this is going to fly over my head and it's going to be alienating to others. I don't think this is the case uh, for Once and Always. Yes, this was definitely made for the older fan base. Uh, too many references or and Easter eggs and stuff are organically in the DNA of this that it could not for it that to not be the case. But it's done in a way where if you don't get it, it's not going to be like, oh, I'm missing on something crucial here. You're not going to feel like you're outside of the joke. They do it well where it's like it's there. And if you don't get it, it's it's a piece of inconsequential dialogue. It's not even like it's being played for laughs. But if you get it, it will evoke that that nice reaction out of you. Um, and it's just a good time. And we're we're in need of that. I mentioned at the beginning of the re-release episode, like, hey, I've been doing the EA thing and it's been it's been tiring. You notice that this episode, I'm I'm almost done. I'm wrapping up sooner. It's because I'm exhausted. Um, it's a very tiring day and not everybody's job is, is like that. Uh, but at points like with with mine, I'm, I'm working with kids and there can be violence to me. I've been hit more times than anybody would like. Um and that's not to complain, and it's not to say it's all that. Uh, it's always that, but there is there is a lot of stuff going on, a lot of heavy stuff. And once and always, when I did watch it, it it was a nice break from that. It was just it was it was feel goodery, and I, we we need more of that. Um, so I'd really recommend it. I I think you can I think you can watch it and. Appreciate it critically. Um, I think you should adjust your expectations accordingly. Um, but I think you can... I th I don't see any reason that there's not to like it. Um, and you might not enjoy it. But to me, I, I don't see... it. It's too, it's too fun. It's too fun to not like, if that makes sense. I, is it Empire Strikes Back, which is my favorite movie of all time? No. But is it's not something I was like pulling teeth to watch, which too many things I've watched, including other Power Rangers things, <laughs> have been. This I, I had a smile on my face the entire time I watched it. Uh, it was a forty to fifty minute blast of nostalgia, but in the best possible way. Are there things that could have made it better? Absolutely. Uh, would I have loved to see other past Rangers and like Amy Jo Johnson, Austin St. John, um, friggin' Nah, Tanya didn't really show up to Zio, but you get you get what I'm going for. Or other voices in there? Sure, yes, but. I'm not going to hold it against it because they they didn't get them or couldn't be there. Uh, what we got, while not perfect, was just a nostalgic delight and a blast and not phoned in at all. Um, it's going to seem like I'm picking on it, but I'd say when you look at some other shows now, I can't say this for that 90 show. That 90 show is also an exception to it. Shout out to my boy Christian, because I know he really loves it. Um but a lot of these revival shows are like, oh, it's the same show, but it's the exact same show. Just here's a slightly different setting, but it's the exact same thing that it was and nothing really new. This what it this took that nostalgic approach, ingrained it in the DNA, but it also did. I didn't feel like I was watching something I had already watched before. I. Was return. It was like I was catching up with an old friend who I hadn't seen in a while, and seeing some of those changes. And it was it was just a delight. Uh, so if you're needing uh, something to brighten your day, uh, or if you want to scratch that Power Rangers nostalgic itch, if you haven't yet, do yourself a favor, fire up on Netflix. Uh, if you can, have a bag of popcorn um, or just a nice snack, but. I really think you'll enjoy yourself and it'll be a lot of fun. I, I've got nothing but praises to sing for it. It was it was such a delight. Like I said, not perfect, but it didn't need to be. And 
I think what we got, flaws and all, was a wonderful representation of all the best aspects of those original three seasons of Power Rangers and a great reminder of why they are so cherished and, and beloved, even though they might not be the favorites. Uh, when you talk to when you talk to most people in the Ranger community, most of the time their their favorites are listed as some of the some of the other ones, namely in space, time force, RPM. Uh, those are looked at as like the S tier shows. But Mighty Morphin set the formula, but then also it has a charm and such a fun aspect that the other ones emulated emulated well and ingrained but i think mighty morphin had it the most in spades and once and always is such a great example of that anyways i'm gonna let you guys go i'm exhausted i need to make some food <laughs> i'm recording this in the evening after working a very long day i hope you all have a wonderful day i hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll be back with a new one in a couple weeks Take care and God bless my friends. And also be sure to, if you want to hear more of me and more importantly, uh, from my boo Christian, who we used to do into the weeds with, uh, you'll see in the link tree, uh, in link in the description, hop over to my other podcast with my boo Christian, the radio arcade. Come check us out. Hope you have a wonderful day. Take care and God bless my friends. Peace.